Been a couple of weeks, I think, since we went out this door, and last time that happened, those were green tomatoes. Hello, Mr. Crow. And sticks, most of the leaves are off the oaks, those two oaks. Uh, but there's still plenty more leaves to go on that. When I went to sleep last night, about 10, it was 39 degrees here on Fallen's Pond. And when I woke up at about 5.30, 53 degrees. How does that happen? How does it get warmer? After midnight, well, the wind picks up. What was a cold high-pressure system coming in with a wind from the northwest over the last few days went right over us yesterday. The wind went light and variable. And now we're on the backside with the wind from the southwest. And that pushes the temperature back up. So we're on the warm side of this high. And there's a pressure gradient from New England all the way down to what was Hurricane Nicole. Landfall, Vero Beach, 3 a.m. So many people in the eye. Storm chaser dude, Josh, always in the eye. He said it was, uh, I don't know, his 67th eye wall and I don't know, close to 50 eyes. <laughs> no matter where it is, he'll chase. And he says it was a relatively mild eye wall. Beautiful foliage, just about done with foliage. Stick season is what we call it now. So how often do you see a hurricane warning and a blizzard warning on the map in the lower 48 at the same time? Well, the hurricane is no longer a hurricane, but the blizzard is ramping up in North Dakota. Uh, Melbourne, I saw that the guy, the uh, observations in Melbourne had uh, wind gusting past 65, so that was the hurricane, but in Bismarck, North Dakota, it does not look like blizzard conditions are verifying so far, uh, but there's a blizzard warning for the rest of the day in North Dakota. Love watching the birds around here. So I invite my neighbors <laughs> to bring their leaves over, and there's plenty of trees around here, and to build up the worm farm. And the leaves will squish down. Tremendously, it's mostly air and organic material right in there. So if you pile leaves, just jump in and Cape Cod, come on over. We still got plenty of raking to go. And uh, so, what's going to happen? You've got a hurricane to the south. Well, now post tropical storm. It's still a tropical storm. It's going to be a post tropical storm coming up the Appalachians. And that blizzard's going to move into Canada and the merge of uh, the tropical system and the winter storm are going to happen right over southeastern Canada as it goes by New England. So it's going to be a transition and it's a challenging forecast for how much wind and rain and how warm it's going to get here in southeastern New England. It looks like the worst of the weather is going to come in Friday night. So rain develops late tomorrow and that's a surge of warm air. Oh, first of all, let's look at the surface map. Uh, we've got three warm fronts. <laughs> One to the north, one to the west, and one north-south, south of us. So uh, surges of warmer air coming in. And this morning, Mount Washington, about 2,300 feet, is close to 60 degrees. Now, that's the same elevation where we've been making snow for the last few days. So those snow piles are probably going to endure, but they're taking quite a hit. So the warmer air is over us right now. And by Saturday morning, I think most of us are in the warmer air. Boston, close to 70 tomorrow, in the lower 70s on Saturday. And uh, the record, by the way, for Saturday, 76 in 1909. <laughs> We're not going to break that record, but we are going to touch 70. And there is enough energy in the atmosphere for perhaps a strong line of thunderstorms in southeastern New England on Saturday morning. So real heavy rain. Looks like one to three inch rainfall uh, with that system. And the front is not going to go that far offshore. The trough axis is going to stay off to our west for a while. So more low pressure is going to develop along that front and we may have some more showers coming through here on Sunday. Uh, not that much wind inland. Uh, the coast, I think the wind uh, may gust past 40 or 50. The NAM is kind of crazy with gusts past 60 knots. <laughs> and I don't think that's going to happen. Going with the, uh, the milder Euro for the wind speeds of 40 to 50 along the shoreline and some of the hilltops inland on Saturday morning. And then that pushes out, so it's left uh, so with a sort of breezy weekend where the temperature's only gradually cooling aloft, and uh, that means instability showers with a little wave of low pressure going by in the Gulf of Maine on Sunday. Uh, may have some dark clouds, maybe some grapple coming out of the sky as it gets colder. And so 
it's kind of a typical November weekend after the Saturday stuff shuts down uh, during the midday. And then Monday and Tuesday, you got cold air coming in, snow guns come back on, and then you got a system racing out of the Gulf of Mexico. What a perfect storm track here for snow in the highest elevations of far northern New York and northern Vermont and New Hampshire. You know, we, we had few of these last year, and already we're seeing one forecast now. This is still close to seven days away. So it looks like Wednesday, the mountains may get a net gain of snow with some heavy rain, almost a little bit of a nor'easter here next Wednesday. And that's going to lead to the coldest air of so far this season. Just a huge expanse of air, uh, sub-freezing air, all of Canada, much of the northern and eastern United States. Uh, remember I said watch for when it warms up in Alaska for it to cool off in New England several days later? Well, Fairbanks is supposed to go up to 33 degrees in the next couple of days, first above freezing, and all that cold air relief, first above uh, freezing in weeks, really. It's been, it was uh, for a week there, it was only about 10 degrees. Uh, that was two weeks ago. So Alaska warms up and Canada and the United States cool off not that Canada's been too warm, but Eastern Canada has been warm. So the transition is underway. It's a multi-phase transition. And by uh, this time next week, uh, I think we're going to be skiing at Killington. This is Thursday morning. So mark my words on that. If not Thursday morning, then Friday morning. And uh, it looks like the pattern is going to be ripe for snow making. So we are going to have many areas opening up. Uh, by Thanksgiving that want to open up for skiing here in the Northeast. And as far as surf goes, I think it's gonna be a pretty messy wind chop here next couple of days. Maybe it cleans up a little bit Saturday in a few spots. If you can find some sheltered spots, the wind is gonna really let up. And uh, I ran into one of my surf buddies, Sean Vecchione, yesterday. And so I'll leave you with just a couple of scenes. Um, what kind of bird was that at Great Hill? I don't know. And some pretty foliage almost gone by. And Sean got his dog an ultimate RV and huge bed. What kind of bird is that? Good girl. Clea? How do you spell that? K-A-L-E-A. Clea. -E and Sean got a sprinter. <laughs> this is for Janet, because she knows that I want one. And gotcha. And a bed and a surfboard well, and a cooler. Any oysters in there? Not yet. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> cool.